How's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so I wanted to be a little bit more professional about this one and actually have my copy of, well, one of my copies of 101 Dimensions with me. Um, unfortunately, because I still haven't unpacked everything yet, uh, it's, it's somewhere in my giant wardrobe. Um, and I did have a look for it just now, but it's buried under so much stuff and I, I don't have the energy to take everything out just to put everything back again. So unfortunately, I can't do what I originally planned and have the book with me. Um, so it's a good job I've got like a really, really good memory of like most of the beats of the book from all the, all the times that I've read it. Um, I mean, likewise, I could have been a little bit more more professional and rewatched um, the the animated version of the movie, which is the one that I have the most issues with. Um, but yeah, with with everything else I have to do, um, uh, just just didn't happen because I really don't like it. So <laughs> really didn't want to watch something again that I just genuinely don't like. Um, so yeah, here is my completely unprofessional and definitely very biased <laughs> version of what I could have done a little bit more professionally. Um, the book is better. My first ever The Book is Better. Um, so yeah, I think in the future when I'm going to be doing these, I would probably be a little bit more um, professional about it and like reread the book and rewatch the film and you know come at it from a kind of well this is this and this is that um but with this particular one as I said because I couldn't get to my copy of the book and because I really really don't like the animated version of the film and I really don't want to watch it again <laughs> um I'm going to be a little bit less professional about this one um so I think I'm gonna sort of start this um, not necessarily launching in with all the reasons why the book is great and actually give a bit of a fair shake and a bit of a fair shout out to um, the live action versions of um, 101 Dimensions because I don't have as much of an issue with them and I've, I've discussed, this, this with a, discussed this with a few people but the main reason I don't have so much of an issue with all the changes and all of the this, that and the other that they do with the, the live action versions of the film um, is because they've updated it. Not, I mean, not update for now, but updated for the time period that it came out in, which I think was like early 2000s, something like that. Um, so it's an updated telling of the story. So of course they're going to make all of these different changes and these different additions and they're going to do it slightly differently and they're going to put the focus on the slightly else. And it doesn't bother me as much because it's an update. That's fine. I, I get that and I, I don't have that sort of so much of an issue with it. Likewise, I believe there was a brief stint where they had a 101 Dalmatian animated cartoon. Um, well, of course it was an animated cartoon. Uh, cartoon series, um, a Disney cartoon series. And again, that didn't bother me as much because it was telling a completely different story. It was focusing on the puppies um, and it was set after the events of 101 Dimensions. Um, so again, it, it didn't bother me as much. And I actually remember quite enjoying that cartoon um, when it when it was around and, and when I got the chance to sort of see it. So, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, the, the book is 100% the best version of the story. I don't think... <laughs> I definitely think it is still better than those versions of the story, but I'm saying that in terms of what this is primar primarily going to be about, it's primarily going to be about why I really like the book and why it is my favourite book of all time versus what, or compared with and why I dislike the animated version, um, the 101 Donations Disney film animated version is specifically the one that I have big issues with because as I said the live animated versions don't bother me as much because they're updated retellings of the story um, and the cartoon is set after the events the cartoon series is set after the events so my, my big issue 
my big the book is better is specifically with the the animated version and i apologize that was a very babbly rambly kind of introduction to all of this as i said i'm not as prepared as i should be because i'm not very professional <laughs> um so uh i think this is something i've said uh, previously in one of my blogs, um, 101 Dalmatians, The 101 Dalmatians book uh, by, I think her name is Dodie Smith, if I'm saying that right, um, is one of my favourite books of all time, if not my favourite book of all time. It is certainly the book that I have read the most across the course of my lifetime, partly because it's not a huge book, um, so it doesn't take me that long to get through it. Um, partly because I, I like the character, I love the character, I love the story, I love the way that it's written. Um, I love the slightly, I don't want to say slightly feminist feel to it, but there is certainly a strong female presence within the book that you, I don't think you really get the feel so much of when you flip over to the, to the animated film. <laughs> At least not from what I can remember. Um, there is certainly, you know, a lot about... The, the book that just just excites me and resonates with me and every time I go to read it even though I know exactly what's coming next I'm sort of like looking forward to all those things that I enjoy about the book and yeah it's not a perfect book yes it's very of its time um, and a little bit flawed here and there in places but apart from that you know there's a lot about the book that I that I do like and it it has a great sense of adventure to it, it has a great sense of pacing and, and journey to it and everything makes sense yes okay there are maybe a few plot holes here and there but compared to what you get with the animated movie uh they are not so bad <laughs> um for a start the the characters make more sense in the book um specifically the human characters make more sense in the book so you have mr darling i think he's Dearly, Mr. Dearly, this this is why I needed to have my copy of the book <laughs> so that I could get their names right. Um, anyway, so Pongo's owner. Um, in the book, he is an accountant. This makes sense. It makes sense for somebody who owns a townhouse in London and has a nanny. Being a musician, a struggling musician, I might add, in the Disney film, doesn't make sense because he would not be able to afford that townhouse in London, nor would he had, have his nanny around. Um, and in the book, they do take it a step further, and there are actually two nannies. Uh, nanny Cook and Nanny Butler. Um, and I like, I mean, you, they neither of them get that much... Um, that much of showing, but they have very distinct personalities. You know who these women are, um, and, and you know it, it's one of the it's one of the reasons why I sort of like say there is a slight feminist undertone to the story <laughs> that you get more in the book. Um, and one of the ways it is, it's through one of the nannies, which is Nanny Butler, and and her um, men. Well. This is this happens very back, very beginning of the book, not really a spoiler at all. Um, but the two nannies decide, um, sort of as their wedding gift to their the, to to the, uh, the the children that they raise or help raise. Um, they both decide to train to be what they are or what their surnames are. So Nanny Butler trains to be a butler, and Nanny Cook trains to be a cook. Um, and Nanny Butler chooses as her uh, her attire, her official attire, to wear a butler outfit with a frilly little apron. It's brilliant. It's like one of my favourite images is seeing the, the family, the dogs, um, and the two nannies walking along. And you've got Nanny Butler in the end, at the end, in, in, like dressed up like a butler with this nice little apron on. <laughs> great image and it says like so much about her, her character and, and, and her personality as I said you don't get a lot but you get so much from just that just that little bit and just that sort of little moment and incidentally Nanny Butler is um, Mr. Dearly's 
apologies. I quickly paused this in order to go double check that it is dearly. It is indeed dearly, so I can keep going with that name and say it right. Um, but yeah, so Mr. Dearly's nanny was Nanny Butler, um, and Mrs. Dearly's nanny was Nanny Cook. Um, so yeah, it's like it just with like a little bit, they they give you so much, and as I said, it makes it makes so much more sense to have Mr. Dearly be an accountant and then a struggling musician, given the setup that you're given at the beginning of the film, um, especially because. He is a successful accountant. Okay, yes, there are some plot contrivances to give him a lot of money, being an accountant. Um, that's kind of fun of the story. That's that you know, it, it makes more sense than than the hit song, hit song that you get in in the animated film as being their salvation to their money problems. Dillies don't really have money problems. No, they can afford to have you know. 17 odd plus dogs running around um at the point in time when they say we're keeping the puppies um but you know they they they're still you know well off enough to for the lifestyle that they are presented as having which is what like one of the first things that annoys me about the film like why why a kid can understand you know he's smart with numbers it's easy to understand. Why turn him into a musician apart from the fact that you want to shove a song in there? It's just probably not. I don't really like that song particularly either. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's a particularly creative song. So, um, so yeah, in, in that sort of showing, the, the human characters are definitely a lot better defined. I think the villain is better in the book. I don't like her Disney design whatsoever. Um... My major issue with her, with Cruella de Vil's design um, in the animated film is that they make her look like a 40-year-old woman. 40-year-old crazy woman. She's not. She's the same age as Mrs. Dilly. And in the book, in the illustrations in the book, she looks the same age as Mrs. Dilly. Maybe, maybe a little bit older than her, but not, not by a whole lot. She is sleek. She is well designed. She's well crafted. She's poised. She doesn't come across as being necessarily evil. She definitely comes across as being a bit weird, but she doesn't necessarily come across as being evil. Whereas everything about the animated version, it's like there's the you know the the whole point of that song in like the first what how many minutes of the film is because this woman exhumes evil. You can tell that she's evil. Um, Whereas in the in the book, no, she is perfectly passable uh, member of society of you know even high society. She's sleek. She's you know well maintained. She's a beautiful woman. She sort of defies this idea that evil is ugly. That's kind of the point. Um, and she's married to a pharaoh who doesn't get any lines in the entire book, um, but there is a great description of him um, by one of the animal characters, uh, that he is weak and evil. Cruella de Vil is strong and evil, and Mr. de Vil is weak and evil. And I don't think you've ever given a first name. You just know he's a furrer. <laughs> and, that he, and that he had to change his name. He had to change his name uh, because Cruella was the last of the de Vils. You get more of a backstory for Cruella as well. You get more of an idea of this family that she's come from, um, which you don't get in the animated film. You know, ev everything in the book, it's, 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 I wouldn't say it's subtler. I don't think it's, you know, the huge amount subtler. Um, but you get this, this build-up of who this is as a person, and you get a much better payoff for, for everything in, at the end, and it feel so much more satisfactory at the end and that's just from the point of view of the human characters who are not even like your protagonists um because your protagonists are the dogs <laughs> and the dogs are so much more interesting in the book um you know, I'm not just going sort of like from their point of view sort of things so you know calling their owners pets and, and stuff like that which is you know just a cute little a cute little addition um but you get things like, you know, the fact for a start, it's not Pongo and Perdita. Uh, Perdita is a, is a character, but she's not 
Congo's mate, Missy is. Um, and Perdita has a has a different mate who I believe is called Prince. Don't really meet him to like the very, very end of the book. Uh, so I, I don't remember his name quite well, but I'm, I'm fairly sure he's called Prince. Um, and she's liver spotted. Perdita is a liver spotted Dalmatian. Um, and she also loses her puppies. Um, and that's, you know, how she sort of comes into the story as a as a, a foster mum to uh, Pongo and Mrs. Um, puppies. And I, I like that. I like the idea of, you know, they sort of create this sense of, well, that's the thing, that there's a stronger sense of family, there's a strong sense of bonding between the dogs. In the book, you get more of a, not just, um, and not just with like the main dogs, but like their journey. Their journey feels like a journey. Their journey takes a substantial number of days because they are crossing country in the middle of winter um, without, you know, by foot. And it takes an appropriate amount of time and they meet some really interesting characters along the way. And I get it. I get you can't show every single beat in an animated feature. I, I perfectly am fine with cutting characters out for the sake, for the sake of, of time um, and for the, for the sake of, you know, making the story a bit more concise and a bit more consistent um and then you completely change the gender of a character <laughs> a very fairly important character um as well and you know that then that then bugs me a lot more because like i said the book i wouldn't say it's feminist I, I, at all um but there are a lot of strong female characters in the book a lot of the dogs that help them along the way are female characters not exclusively but a lot of the more memorable ones are female characters um and then you have two cats two very important cats um in 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 the book uh, you only get the one in the film and it's not even the right gender because <laughs> both those cats are girls um and both those cats are you know one a slightly more important character than the other um but they're both fairly substantial characters and they're both really, again, good, strong female characters. And what do they do in the animated film? Boy cat. Just the one boy cat. Because girl cat couldn't possibly be called lieutenant. <laughs> Could, couldn't possibly be a military cat. Um, had to be boy cat. Um, yeah, so again, it's little sort of like little things like that that kind of really bother me about the adaptation. And I think it would have bothered me less if the adaptation wasn't supposed to be set in the same time period. I think if then, and, and, and then I'm going to go back to the point I made at the beginning of this, where I was like, um, the live action versions don't bother me as much because they're an updated version of the story, they're a modern retelling of the story. I think if the animated Mohammed Dalmatians wasn't clearly supposed to be set in the same time period as the book, all those changes would bother me a lot less. It's the fact that it is supposed to be set in the same time period as, as the book, and I'm like, and then you change literally all the characters <laughs> all of the characters um none of them are really close to to how they are in the book and the book is what i grew up with i didn't watch the animated film until i was an adult because i wasn't aware i was very aware that the film wasn't very faithful um and i loved the book and i only watched it in the end out of sort of you know curiosity i, I wanted to see and i yeah it's it's not it's not as good no <laughs> it's definitely not as good it, you lose something in the translation and it goes from being a book that yes it's a children's book but it's an interesting children's book it's a, it's a children's book that i as an adult can go back to and still enjoy at pretty much the same level that i enjoyed it as a kid i might understand it a bit better now i might have like different thoughts and i might come to it from a slightly different perspective but i still enjoy reading it now as much as i did when i was a kid which i can't say necessarily about a lot of the kids books that i enjoyed a lot when i was a kid um but it, it's the one I, I still try to find time every single year to read it for a reason 
and the film just doesn't represent what it is about that book that I like so much and it, it changes all of these details that I actually really liked about the book. <laughs> it takes them away <laughs> and those you know when, when you're sort of taking away what are in you know, my opinion the best parts of the book you've lost you've lost you know the the appeal of it and by setting it in the same time period I mean presenting it as being the same story just doesn't work for me just does not work for me so yeah all right <laughs> i hope um i've got my point across reasonably well um i hope you guys are kind of understanding my my perspective of it at least i'm curious to maybe read the book if you haven't read the book um and sort of make the the comparison for yourself um i mean uh, you know at the end of the day this is just my opinion this is just how i feel i believe the 101 dalmatians is better than disney's 101 dalmatians hands down 100 percent. but you might read the book and have a completely different opinion to me because you grew up with the film and you think the film is a, a much better version um I'm hoping that maybe some of you will will make the comparison and kind of go, actually, no, the book is better. But I, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's an opinion, um, and it's my opinion, and it's not an opinion I think will ever be altered, because in my opinion, the film takes away everything that makes the book so great, um, and it just removes all of those really fantastic moments and all of those really powerful strong characters are just just destroyed by what the film does and that that's my opinion and it's not going to change anytime soon or ever um because for me the book is the definitive version yeah <laughs> we'll go with that hopefully that will make sense um right so next time um the title for the next vlog is going to be role playing for ideas uh, so it's going to be a bit of a writerly one um because when i was trying to come up with ideas for the next vlog uh, it was literally the next thing that kind of cropped into my head so yeah um next one is going to be role playing for ideas um i hope you guys are sort of intrigued come back and find out what I mean by that. I apologise for getting so ranty and rambly and all over the place. Um, a little bit with this one. I do just love the book. I, I do. I really love the book. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you're looking forward to the next one and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!